Hi guys, I'm Mike. And I'm Stephen. And this is Indie Fanatics, your home for indie car content with weekly podcasts and feature videos. Welcome back to the channel, guys, and to a, well, very different video today. We've got our first ever driver interview on the channel here at Indie Fanatics, uh, a guy who's coming up through the uh, feeder series, essentially, of IndyCar in the USF 2000 for this season. And if you haven't already guessed who it is on screen or by the thumbnail that you've clicked on to get to this video, it is uh, Miles Rowe. So, Miles, thank you so much for coming on to the channel, buddy. Of course, yeah. I, I appreciate it. It's a huge pleasure. Excited to talk to you today, Michael. Uh, no problem at all, man. Um, I hope we enjoy it and hopefully we can have a good chat just kind of looking through your career, obviously aspirations and how the journey's been so far and then, you know, the very exciting season you've got ahead of you, uh, obviously with the Force Indy team uh, going forward. So I, I guess, uh, you know, where we start is to start at the beginning um, I've seen um, from the interviews you've done, you'd, we, we had a little chat before and uh, it go from there. So you, you started off, I think you said about four years old, you, you're watching TV. What what kind of grabbed you when the channel flicked, it stopped on motorsports and you'd gone, you know what, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, <clears throat> the, the image I remember was, it was Fernando's blue and yellow Reynolds. That's what I saw. Um, and and once, once I saw it, I think it was, I think it was in France. I can't remember the track, but I think it was France. And when I, when I saw them going through the chicanes, I mean, there is nothing else like it that I've seen. I mean, my dad, he actually, um, when he was younger, he, he wanted to be a, a pilot. Uh, and he used to, he, he used to tell me stories of how, um, growing up in Jamaica used to like sit and like watch the planes take off and land, like at this airport, that, that flying spirit, for my dad and seeing those cars with, with those wings that they had, like go, go through the chicane and everything, especially the way Fernando, Fernando drives. I mean, it, it was unreal. And I, it was something I absolutely had to do from that moment on. Once I, once I saw that it was something that existed, it was, that's what I had to do. Yeah. Nice man. And, and am I, am I taking that Fernando Alonso is then one of your kind of, uh, we'll come on to another racing hero, but one of your racing heroes. Did he, he is my, I have, I'd say three racing heroes. He is def he is the one, one of them. Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, man, uh, not many people in Indy Fanatics have seen this backdrop. It's usually on the F1 Fanatic stuff, but I've got my kind of Fernando caps up there from his Indy stuff from there. He He's my favorite driver, my main man. So we can yeah. certainly share a love of Fernando Alonso. I'm not going to be uh, disputing that when you uh, say that he's one of your favorites, man. That's, that's cool. So obviously it then... You were up and you go into karting and I, I've done a little bit of digging. I don't, I think it was like a month ago it was uploaded. I don't know if you've started this YouTube channel, whether it's your fan, family, but I, I found this kind of um, fun video that you did. I think you were about 12 or 13 at the time. Um, if your mum interviewing you, I think saying uh, what Miles, <laughs> uh, what Miles was and talking about Lewis Hamilton being your hero and F1 being the goal. I, I believe obviously it's, you know, F1 is always perceived as the pinnacle of motorsport. When, when you're always starting, that's, you know, Fernando Alonso was F1 was your first aspect into motorsport. Um, talk, talk me a bit, a little bit through that time, the kind of the start into go-karting, obviously Lewis and, you know, the inspiration uh, probably that he is to you uh, in aspects. Uh, talk a little bit more through that for me. Yeah. Um, so, right. We're well, saying uh, Lewis, he won the championship in 08, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So around that time was when I was starting to get into, um, like really into the sport of go-karting and realizing it's the step you need to take at a young age to get into racing driving, especially, um, I was born in 2000, so 2008 was when I was eight, which is the typical age to get started in go-karts. Um, but because of financial reasons, it wasn't just like, okay, we're going to go out and get this cadet cart or whatever and, and go whip it around the track. So it took a couple of years um, for me to mature from then and and research what the, the steps I needed to take to actually like get to, get to these different levels. And, um, it took about two years. I'd, I'd say I started the intense research when I was about 10. Um, the idea came forward when I was about eight, especially when 
lose one would change every day i mean i used to be such an early riser i mean i still am an early riser but compared to like back then i used to wake up at like six in the morning sometimes like just to like get on my laptop and just and i guess as as a 10 year old i call it work but like to look at websites and add things to my cart like different car parts like spindles and like steering wheels and like the tires and rims and all that so i did that for a while like trying to figure out everything we needed to do and how much everything would cost for us to get into the sport. Um, and I was 10, I was, I was very unrealistic. Um, so, you know, like I always had this shopping cart open that was like 20 K or whatever. For my, <laughs> yeah. For my parents, you know, me on racing and like, obviously that didn't work out, but, um, after a lot, a lot of research went in, I found this series called, um, pro cup karting, which is now endurance karting. Um, they do endurance, um, races, uh, around uh, the states it's really cool but it was called pro cup karting at the time and it, it was held in, in a place um in a venue that the andretti family has it's it's like it's andretti's indoor karting and and food uh, i don't know the full name but it's andretti's like it's like a dave and busters you know mm. um yeah. and, but it, they have a go-kart track in there and so the pro cup karting series they had three levels from pro um to intermediate to beginner um, racing in, in the Andretti venue. Uh, and this one was in Roswell, Georgia. Uh, and so I found it and it was extremely, extremely inexpensive to, to do a full season. So that's how I got started. I found that. Um, and we started in the beginner series, even though we didn't want to, because I was so confident in my speed, but right then we like wiped the, we wiped all those guys out the gate, um, in the beginner series. It was like, they went through stages. It was like GT3, GT2, GT1. GT1 was the pro, GT3 was the pro. So GT3, I wiped them. And then they were like, okay, we got to go GT2, um, which was really cool because normally you have to do a whole season to get up to like an, another um, another level. So it's really cool to see that I, I like out the gate, I had some like skill going for me, um, which also showed like my dad um, and, and anybody like my, my mom also that, that I had, that this was something that we could actually like go for it um, because, you know, it, to, to, run and racing is a, is a huge investment. So it's not something you want to do if you just, if you, if you really don't think you have a chance of making it a career, um, later in life. Uh, so that was, that was really, that was a really good positive. So we did the GT2 championship, got first in that. And then we went to Atlanta Motorsports Park where the Pro Cup Karting Series transferred from Andretti there and they were running outdoor concession carts instead of the indoor concession carts. And I got second or third in that championship, and that was great. That was really cool. Um, but that's how I like actually started. Um, before I got my first cart, it was about a year and a half, two years of, of concession karting. Um, and it was con it, it was not any kind of concession karting. It was competitive, really competitive concession karting. I mean, these guys like you would be so surprised when you see them like in the venues, like driving driving around those tracks with those barriers. Like they they knew everything about those tracks and they were they were quick they were so quick i still don't think i could beat some of them to this day i mean some of them like you would you would compare them to senna the way they were driving around the track like they were really good but yeah so that was really good to, to introduce me into the competitive world um, of racing for a very inexpensive uh cost compared to getting a twenty thousand dollar deal on go-karts and parts yeah <laughs> yeah that uh, yeah it's uh, i think parents they they always have to moderate expectations and yeah usually they kind of maybe expect that around you know uh 18 19 20 going uh mum dad i might be looking to get my first place you're like going at 10 years old can i get a go cut uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh yeah, exactly yeah. So I, that, that's interesting. And you, you're right. You're so right. Like motorsport is such an investment, even at such a young age, um, for going in it, for other sports are a lot more accessible at that kind of younger age group to go in. But it, it was nice knowing out the blocks that obviously you're like, you know what, I'm I'm pretty good at this. You know, exactly. I'm, yeah. I, I yeah. can race. And so mm -hmm. that's pretty good. And Obviously, one of the famous people who get connected with one of the names uh, linked for you is always the kind of um, Will Power kind of noticed you a little bit and um, gave a shout out. So, wh where was that in terms of your stage you can't create? You progressed up out of concession carts and competing in more kind of regional or national based series, or was it still on this sort of circuit and he'd somehow stumbled across and gone, this kid can race? Yeah. Yeah. So, it was it was in between the two. So after concession karting, 
that's when we decided we can we can budge a little <clears throat> and make uh, the investment and get our own go kart. So we got our own go kart, um, and because the Atlanta Motorsports Park is is a private track, you have to do like a whole membership thing, and that's just a whole other thing. Like that's expensive. So we would travel up to the GoPro Motorplex um, in North Carolina. Um, so that was like my home track away from home in a way, kind of a thing. Um, and we travel up there and, and for the first time when we went up there, that's when I ran the cart uh, with Timmy Tech, uh, who was my tuner at the time, um, who helped set up the cart um, so we can run it. And Will was there practicing um, just like, cause he, he, he lives in North Carolina. So he was just there, you know, getting his laps in, working on his points and stuff. And, and I went out one session and, and was lucky enough to actually go out like in front of him. Um, and he, it ended up being a, a, a learning session because he ended up falling behind me and then passing me. And then I would be able to follow behind him and see what he was doing. And then he would like let off and then go behind me again and like watch me kind of a thing and then go back in front of me. And then I could like learn off of him again and then like go back behind me and see what I was doing kind of a thing. And that happened like two or three sessions actually. Um, and so after the track, he like, obviously he talked to me and would tell me kind of like what I was doing and stuff. Um, and it was that, like, it was just naturally like, that's how we met for the first time. Um, and you could say it was a journey all the way up till now because, um, yeah, it just, it just played in perfectly, um, to, to, to work this deal out. Um, I, I met him again. Uh, for my one of my first and only IndyCar races in Birmingham, Alabama, actually, um, which was sweet. And I, I saw him again, and, and we talked for a little bit. Um, but he followed me on Instagram, which when that happens, you can like switch through different. Um, you can like send a message, and they could see it. You don't have to accept it, kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, so that so fast forward way down the line after Lucas Oil formed the series three years later after not driving a car, um, I, I was like, I gotta do something. Like I've, I've sent messages to, to people, to connections, uh, or people I've like networked with in the past and stuff for looking for opportunities, you know? Mm. But, um, I was watching a long beach race in my room and I was like, I, I, like, I got, I gotta do something like, you know, just really wanted to like, yeah, I gotta make something happen. So I, I sent a message and I was just like, is there any, if there's any opportunity that you might know of, um, just let me know. And that was at the time actually where the race for equality and change was just starting to kick off. Um, and, and that's when the cards all started to come together. Um, and yeah, it, here we are. Nah, that's, that's pretty awesome. So we'll, we'll still, uh, been an active part in, um, helping you along your way, if not necessarily, uh, you, you know, getting you right, but, you know, being there for advice and, uh, you know, obviously opening up this uh, quality and change force indie ride opportunity for you as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's been, help, uh, now he's been, it's been good to, to talk to him a few times and everything. I mean, before, especially before race equality and change, like I didn't talk to him. Um, I just was like a very slightly acquainted to him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, now like we're acquainted and, and, and he, he helps me out um, a little bit, like not like date or anything like that, but um, like advice, like kind of a thing um, just to help me, like help me uh, think a little bit better, especially with my lack of experience and also being so green three years out of the car kind of a thing. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's, he, he helps me with that a little bit. Um, and he's really nice for that too. Uh, but yeah, it's, he's a great guy though. He's a really good guy and very caring and everything. Um, yeah. Like he comes across that way and he is, he always comes across as a bit of a carting nut. Like whenever he gets an opportunity, yeah. he always seems to be yeah. on a carting track with his willpower carts. Uh -huh. uh, he, he seems to like love the setup on that basis, but no, that's so fascinating to see that, you know, how just a off connection happened and years down the line, it's kind of unfolded there. I probably will jump back a little bit to, um, well, I guess you progress from karting and you mentioned it there, the Luca, Lucas Oil Formula um, series. And that was first experience of kind of a competitive single season or at least a kind of uh, a formulated series in that. 
Yeah, for sure. First, first and only now USF is the, is the thing now. <laughs> yeah. And, and even then, like I was saying, like the, the issues were, were financials and even doing the third weekend was, was a push. But the only reason we did that third weekend was because luckily we came in to, to, to make the winter series. So we did the first race of the winter series and the second race. And we won the, the, there's two races in a weekend and we won the two races in the second weekend. So it was, it was good. It was like good. Um, it was a good push to help us just make that third race. And I'm, I mean, I'm glad we did like, you know, we got a championship under our belt, even though it was three weekends, it was still, it was still very good, especially considering the experience. Um, but yeah, that, that was the first and only competitive open World series, but it went well, you know, I learned, uh, pretty fast and, and got up there and, and it was going good. I, I wish we did the whole, you know, summer series and, and did all the weekends and the traveling and, and things, but it was, it was a very good experience doing that winter series, um, and learning and, you know, RC Anderson, he, he helped me out a lot, um, in that series because he was, he was there, um, just, you know, he was, he was breaking in the cars and everything and helping people with data and everything. Um, so when he would help me with data and, and everything and his onboard video from breaking in the cars, like that was a great learning experience. So especially considering the lack of experience I had to just help progress me a little bit faster um, mm. than I probably would have done. So yeah, it was, uh, that was, it was really good. It was really good. I suppose it was, it was kind of like a double edged sword uh, that series because you'd seen that you could go into single seaters. It's something that you dreamed of and it was, you know, a ladder of, but you know, any sort of single seater is like an experience that obviously you're now progressing onto us, uh, F 2000, but you know, you'd won, you'd been successful in that series. You wanted to do that, but like with most things in motorsports with, you know, talented young drivers, sometimes the funding isn't there. And it was, was that it just the funding dried up and you're like, as much as I want to carry on doing this, we, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. That was, that was the only reason. I mean, like, cause there was no other, there was no reason to stop. You know, we, we, all of a sudden we were flying and, and, but we just didn't have the financials to keep flying, you know? So yeah, that was, that was it. And you know, it, it happens. I mean, racing's an expensive, it's an expensive world, um, a world where you need the financials and you need, the network, if not, you either need one or you need more than likely both, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the deal then. And that's why it took three years to just, luckily I had, you know, it's luck too, you know, like, like most things. Um, so like I was lucky to have the network to help me get back in it three years later kind of a thing. Um, so yeah, it's just, it was, it was, that's how that, how that goes, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I guess, that leads us on nicely, probably, uh, you know, to where we are here, you know, getting that enthusiasm in your karting, showing that, you know, you've got talent success, likes, you know, uh, so many drivers finding that balance, like you said, between network budget and being able to put it together. But your network brought you to uh, this force indie situation where there, you know, diversity and equality um, is right. So how, how did it kind of, come about for you in terms of jumping in that car and you know what what was that experience like you know uh, three years I, I imagine you'd kind of you, you didn't want ever want to give up on the dream but you'd kind of been like mm, well you know you'd, you'd gone off to new york studying your photography your kind of filmmaking mm -hmm. stuff you'd kind of gone a, a plan b was in place essentially mm -hmm. yeah um i mean yeah like you said i mean yeah there was a good two years where I didn't watch any racing, like wow. none at all. Yeah. Um, cause you know, I was just stripped out of it, you know, and the, la the last race I did in Lucas Oil, the very last race I've done, I won it, but I couldn't do it anymore. Um, so it was just too heartbreaking, man. Like I, I couldn't, I just couldn't, I couldn't watch it. I may, I played a video racing games a little bit, you know, kind of a thing. But it was still like, it, it was kind of sad, you know, because it went so well. And then, you know, just things like that, you know, life had to happen kind of a thing. You know, I can't expect my parents or me to just strictly have 200K to, to just spin on cars, you know, like, so 
yeah, that's when I was like, I mean, even before I was getting into filmmaking and, and getting in touch with my creative side, but that's when I was like, okay, not, not when it was like, not when it was like, okay, but that's when I really ramped up what I was, what I was doing. I was already making like short videos and short films, um, in high school a little bit, but that's, but especially like when this ended, that's when I really ramped it up, really got into the creativity, um, and modeling and fashion, um, in, in New York, the New York life, you know, going and, and meeting different photographers and models and, and doing shoots um, on rooftops and, and things like that, you know, like traveling with them. And yeah, like I got really invested in that. Um, and yeah, getting back in the car after that whole like episode, still an episode of journey again, since it's been so long, getting in that car for the first time was, it was interesting, man. Like, you know, my neck, first of all, was, was the big thing, <laughs> you know, like the, it, cause it wasn't even, it's not even like Indy has, at least the Indy GP, it doesn't have that many like sh- strong G corners, you know, like, but still my neck was, was aching, man. It was aching. So that was turning left thing. and right was a no go. Was it? Uh- <laughs> yeah, it was, you know what it was, it was really that it's the long corners, man. It was that long lap, that long right hand corner yeah. um, coming onto the, onto the front straight. And every time I went through there, man, I was like fighting it. I was fighting it. And it's not even that it's really nothing. It's not that many G's, but like racing fitness is a, is a real thing. You can probably not work out very well, but you could race every week and you will be able to drive your car. Like no problem, depending on the car, obviously, but yeah. racing fitness is a thing. And that's when I realized that. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I realized I wasn't race fit anymore, but I was still able to, to control like, you know, the threshold breaking, like threshold breaking has always been a strong suit of the mind. And then like the trail breaking, um, came fine. And it was more about rolling speed, you know, getting off the brake well, um, to get back on throttle. That was kind of the thing that, that I was working with the most, but you know, getting used to the car wasn't too bad. It was mainly like the G's and rolling that speed like, well, you know, so I could really get onto the straights with that straight line speed. Um, but yeah, I didn't seem to lose, to lose much. It just, uh, just was a little rusty, you know, like when you go back in any sport, you know, got to shake the rest off and then you're okay. Nice. And, uh, well, you know, obviously clearly, here today you impressed in that enough not just yourself but you know you impressed rod as well in that situation to kind of give you uh this opportunity this ride um for force indy um oh, well I, I guess i suppose you know the the whole campaign around it is obviously increasing you know the diversity and equality within motorsport rods obviously you know he's worked in motorsport for over 40 years and it, it does it kind of feel weird for you that a team that obviously is brand new, you're the first driver for this team, but in some ways you're carrying a lot of history on your back. Is there kind of like a, a, a sense of pride in being, you know, the, the racing opportunities come back. That was amazing in itself, but in the way that it's kind of been with this force indie team, does it almost make it that bit more special? It does. It makes it a lot more special um, to carry Roger Jack's number, the 99, and uh, be on a mission to, to make the number win, you know, um, and to carry the colors of, of the, Tuskegee, the Tuskegee Airmen's uh, red tails. You know, like, that's that's huge. That's absolutely huge. Um, and I couldn't, I, like, I'm just excited to, to go out there and perform, you know, with the car. I mean... There's, I can't, I, it's the kind of thing you can't express in words for me. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's an honor kind of a thing, you know, like to be able to, to represent uh, those people and bring history, that history back alive, um, for another, for once again, another, uh, good and proper mission. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a huge honor for me and it makes the mission and, and the racing even more exciting and purposeful, which makes racing just all around just amazing. You know, when there's a purpose and a mission, behind racing there's nothing else better than that yeah absolutely absolutely man i i bet it just um yeah it must be an incredible feeling and you know like with well obviously recording this uh what are we we're a week 
and a weekend away, I suppose, away from that first race at Barber Motorsports. Have you, have you ever raced at Barber before? Because I know Barber is, you know, it's quite a new circuit. It's a weird one. It's like a new circuit, but has quite an old feel to it because obviously Dan Gurney, I think, was, uh, you know, involved in the creating uh, of it. It's, it's certainly, if you haven't driven there before, it, it's not the easiest of tracks to kind of maybe necessarily make a debut in a series. Yeah, it's... um. I mean, I haven't, well, first of all, I have not driven at Barber before besides like the testing now. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I think it's, see, I grew, so like I said, I grew up at Atlanta Motorsports Park. That track has a lot of elevation and Barber is like they say a roller coaster. So I, I think that is something that could be a strength for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I just say strengths and weaknesses for what the track is giving me. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm honestly excited for it. And to be honest, it, <laughs> if I'm going to talk from my perspective, if, if COVID wasn't a thing and we were driving at St. Pete, we, for me to come in with a 30 minute practice session and then qualify, that's, that's a big, that's a big step. That's a big step for the first a little bit, mate, a little bit, yeah. just a little, just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so, so it, in, you know, Barber is a really, really fun track. It's really, really fun. So I have no issue with, with the Barber and, and it, it can be hard, but the difficulty is what makes it fun. I, I really appreciate Barber. And I did not know Dan Gurney was part of the design. Of yeah, I believe that. I mean, I'm going to be absolutely ridiculed by uh, people if I've got that one wrong. Um, but I'm convinced <laughs> someone in a comment on a different video mentioned when talking about it, that Dan Gurney was involved in the uh, process okay. of that. But for any indie fans that I've now got that wrong, if I have, I apologise uh, profusely uh, on that. <laughs> I've I've now misled you, if that's the case. But I'll, I'll look it yeah, up and um, I'll, I'll message you and let you know if it's, right. if it's true or not. But uh, yeah, man. So um, obviously the season's ahead. We've got our, we've got our full season. I, I mean, the obvious... I, I suppose we could go the obvious route here. It's probably not a useful question because if you said anything other than I want to win races and win the championship, uh, then you wouldn't be a racing driver in terms mm-hmm. of that aspect. But I, I, I've seen you say the word progression. That's the word. Mm-hmm. I think you've got a pretty sound uh, head on your shoulders in realizing look, the ideal scenario is I go back and I blitz this. But also, I have been out the sport three years. It may take me a little bit time to get race fit, as you said, and mm-hmm. just get up to scratch of competing in that sort of level of racing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like you said, obviously the goal is to win and everything. But I mean, you could say we want to be up front. And I think we have, we can, we can be up front. We definitely can be up front. And that's the goal. And we're going to be working on that um, day in, day out. Um, and like you said, like I've said in the past, the goal here, the real goal here is progression because at the end of the day, I mean, this is the ladder system. I mean, I mean, if we're going to be realistic, I'm, we're trying to get all the way up to IndyCar. Um, so we're going to be progress. Even if we win this championship, we're still going to be progressing the next two, three years, however long it takes, you know? So everything we can do each day in when we're working um, to learn, to get better, to get faster, to get stronger, we're going to do, and that's what it's going to take. You know, anything else you're doing, it's not going to, if anything else you're doing that is not going to help you learn, help you progress, help you get better. It's not really going to like, what are you doing? Like everything we have to, we, we are doing and have to do has to be towards the progression. Otherwise we can't expect to win, you know? So that's, that's the goal. That's the mission. That's what we're doing. Absolutely, man. And, uh, I'd, I'd, I would say uh, it feels weird being 28 year old saying, but uh, being a 20 year old, uh, well, talking to 20 year old, there, you clearly have a very kind of sound head on your shoulders. You're well balanced. I think your life experience have certainly uh, taught you to be balanced in terms of you, you've had the dreams and you still have the dreams. And like you said, they've crushed not seeing racing for two years. That's crazy. That shows how much has affected you, but it also, it probably has that burning hunger in you that you go, damn man, I've got this chance. I'm, I'm going to take that. And I suppose on the network front, is it quite nice that the opening weekend you're opening up with IndyCar as well with the season starting? 
yeah. the following day. I, I, I guess it must be quite nice to be around the paddock. There are going to be guys around there that, you know, being in the business, you, your face gets shown. I imagine conversations are be had, uh, not too much in depth, but it's just, you know, it's, it's all playing the game to make it to the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, like you said, um, that's what it is. The key is, is balance. Um, that's what I've learned. I've learned a lot about balance um, mm. in my past and currently right now. And, and that's what life is. Everything is about balance. Um, it's the yin and yang. And if you're not balanced, then something's going to be too much. And then there's also something that's going to be too little. Um, so that's the key literally to life, to balance whatever you're doing, balance whatever it is around you, um, the people that are around you uh, to to like I said, progress and do better um, to evolve, you know? Uh, and yeah, uh, I'm excited for, for the, the indie weekend at Birmingham and I'm excited to see those indie cars for sure. For sure. Like you said, like maybe there'll be some conversations, but I'm excited to see those cars whipping around Barber cause they're going to be flying, dude. They're going to be flying. So I'm excited for that. I'm real excited for that. <laughs> we got out of the season. So I'll, I'll round off. I'll, I'll get you as a racing fan. So obviously we've focused on you, but as a racing fan, you know, we've got this IndyCar season with, it's almost got a little bit of an all-stars feel about it. You've got Roman Grosjean coming into the series, Jimmy Johnson coming into the series, Scott McLaughlin. You've already got an incredible thing, Will Power, who we spoke about earlier, Scotty Dixon, Joseph Newgarden. I mean, as an IndyCar fan, obviously you're going to be focusing on your racing as well, but you know, you love IndyCar yourself. Uh, on that aspect, are you excited for the season ahead? It it does feel, you know, a really good place IndyCar is as a series. Oh yeah. Yeah. The excitement is unreal. Um, but we're just working. I mean, I'm not, I don't, I don't need the first race to come any sooner. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working to, to get my skills the way they need to be so that I can do my best to win this championship because that's the goal, man. That's the goal. But uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get this first race kicked off and, and rolling for sure um, and to put on a show for the crowd. While IndyCar is not running, hopefully they, they enjoy us racing with our 23-car field. So I'm excited for that, yeah. Absolutely, man. Well, I think that's probably um, a great place to kind of uh, round off this chat. I call it interview, but that always makes it sound like a bit more formal. But uh, it, it's been chat. lovely it getting to know your journey mate and uh, it's been so interesting um just hearing about it, obviously reading about it, but you know just having a, a chat it, it's been fascinating seeing your journey and ju- just talking about seeing how you are as a person it's always interesting to kind of get a feel of a, a driver in that aspect and hopefully viewers have found that interesting and uh will follow your journey keenly as well mate i can only say that i wish you the best of luck i mean amazing opportunity this force indie it's amazing to be leading uh that front and hopefully you know this is this is the first step i know the first steps have come before but you know on this chapter this is the first step and hopefully to bigger and better things mate um so uh, thank you so much for your time thank you man yeah like you said big step uh, first step, but we're going to be pushing and we're going to be progressing through these years. So thank you. Thank you for having me on. Love chatting with you, dude. It was awesome. I'm on 1% though. So Oh, jeez. Right. Okay. Well, I'll wrap this up in terms of uh, <laughs> that aspect. Uh, but thank you so much to Tracy as well for organizing this. And obviously, uh, thank you to Rod, obviously, uh, for getting these things. And, uh, you know, I wish you and the Force Indy team, like I said, the best of luck in the season. And I'll round off how we always do our Indie Fanatics videos, which is, well, I reminded people, if you haven't already liked the video, uh, like it for kind of miles and um, uh, there'll be links to his social medias in the description below so to kind of give him a follow on that aspect if you like what we do on this channel obviously remember to subscribe and you indie fans remember keep bracing <laughs>